Okay, today we're learning about mummies. Woo! So exciting. I love mummies. And I got some nice, nice Egyptian music in the background to get you in the spirit of learning about mummies. So, I'm sure all of you have heard about a mummy before, and you think you probably know what it is. But today, we're really going to dive in deeper, and we're going to learn why they created mummies, why they were important to the ancient Egyptian culture, and how they made the mummies, and how intricate the process was. So, what is a mummy? Well, a mummy is just a preserved body. And they built these mummies into a huge, strong tomb. And the reason they took so much time to build a strong tomb was because they believed that they would need their body in afterlife. Now, they also believed that the heart was the center of your body. So they removed all of your organs after they died and leave only the heart. Once all of the body was cleaned out and cleansed, except for the heart, they then rubbed the body down with special oils and wrapped the body in linen cloth. This was no small process. The process of mummification took 70 days to complete. It was a very, very long process. Now, where were these mummies housed once they were complete? In the beginning of ancient Egypt, they were in what was called mastabas. Now, mastabas are these flat-topped mud brick tombs, just like these ones in the picture. Now these mud brick tombs were built very, very far away from the Nile River. And you may ask, why are they built so far away from the Nile River? Well, as we have previously learned in our Nile River lesson, the Nile River frequently flooded over and could cause damage. So they had to make sure the mastabas were built far enough away from the Nile River that they would not be impacted by the flooding of the Nile. Now, just as all things do in life, they kept evolving their technology and, and making it better, and Mastabas soon became pyramids, is what we like to know today. Now, pyramids are just a burial place for the dead. Now, pyramids were a very intricate place for the dead. They placed items needed for afterlife in the tomb. Now, items they thought they would need are things like jewelry, clothing, and furniture. All kinds of stuff were, were found in the tomb. They also decorated the pyramid in a very intricate way. They painted scenes from the person's life to show, to show the important things that happen within that person's life and also to honor that person. They also carved prayers from the book of, of prayers. I'm sorry, from the book of the dead into the walls. They believed that these practices would help the soul in afterlife. Now, this shows us some examples of the intricate artwork that was put into the coffin. Now, as you can see in here, there is hieroglyphics, which we remember from our last unit, is the writing that the ancient Egyptians used. This picture down here shows the, the painted scenes on the wall of the person's life. There's also hieroglyphics in that as well. Next, you can see some examples of some pyramids. Now, as you can see, that they were very nicely designed. Some of them were larger, some of them were smaller. Both pictures, there were some large ones and there were some smaller ones. And that was very common. And there are still some that stand today in ancient Egypt that you can go and see and tour. Now, why did they build these intricate pyramids and tombs and mummify these bodies? Well, the ancient Egyptians believed highly in what was called a judgment. They believed that the person of the dead would face a panel of judges or a group of judges who would take a scale and weigh their heart on one side and weigh a feather on the other. Now, why may you ask would they weigh a feather on the other side? They thought of the feather as a symbol of truth. Now, if your heart was balanced with the feather or the symbol of truth, you were granted life forever. If your heart did not equal out with the feather, your soul was then eaten by an animal that was part crocodile, part lion, and part hippopotamus. Yikes! I sure hope my soul would have been balanced. Evolution. Woo, we've heard that word before. Evolution is a change over time. Just as we do today, the ancient Egyptians evolved and changed over time to improve their techniques. 
Now, Imhopt was a very important architect that was hired by King Zoser, who improved the structural and appearances, the structural appearances of these pyramids. He was the first to not use mud brick to build the pyramids, but he used stone. He stacked the mastabas on top each, of each other to make it appear like a step-like pyramid. Now, this went along with the latest sayings at that time and the religious writings. They believed that a staircase to heaven is laid for him, the pharaoh, so that he may climb to heaven. So this belief that the pharaoh was going to climb to heaven was directly related to the design of the pyramid. They also believed that the pharaoh would live with Amun-Ri, the sun god, after they were they died. Finally, we have the Great Pyramid. Now, the Great Pyramid is the largest, most spectacular pyramid in Egypt. It was created for Pharaoh Khufu. Now, Pharaoh Khufu ordered this to be built because he wanted to have the most magnificent and biggest pyramid of all times. It took 20 years to build and over 100,000 workers to do it. There was 2 million blocks of stones used to create his tomb alone, and it stood 480 feet high and covered 13 acres. Now, he also had the tip covered in gold to reflect the sunlight off of the pyramid. It was located in a little town called Giza, and you can still see it in this picture. This was the picture of the Pharaoh Khufu, or the outline, the structural outline of Pharaoh Khufu, the tip of the gold right here, and then of course the pyramid. It is magnificent, and it is the it was the most spectacular and largest pyramid in Egypt. So now that we've had a quick rundown of pyramids and mummies, I would like you to make sure you're taking good notes throughout the video. If you need to watch the video more than once, please do so, and be prepared for a fun activity next class. But you'll need to do some studying of these notes because we'll have a little activity. And the more you know, the better you'll do. So good luck to you and have a great night. Thanks for watching.